Welcome back. Uh, this is video number eight, Anomalous CX and Geography. Regarding uh, this anomaly, these are the items to be discussed. Regarding diagnosis uh, by orthography or ventriculography, uh, any retroortic course of CX or left mean is suspected in REO view, in orthogram or ventriculogram dot sign, as the proximal anomalous CX passes behind the aortic root. In angiography, uh, we suspect the absence of CX in left injections if one of the following is present. A long left mean uh, in REO or PA codal. Is it a long left mean or absent CX? In deep REO cranial with more REO or codal, it will be longer since the proximal LED is least foreshortened. It is also suspected when there is no branching at the distal left mean, this mean deflection angle in the spider view, uh, in which there is maximum angulation between LED and CX. It is uh, very useful if there is an absent early diagonal artery which has the same course in this view. No artery in the posterior AV groove. If there is delayed imaging after dye fading in the REO caudal or cranial views, it should be parallel to the coronary sinus. And this is the coronary sinus after dye fading. If there is mitral annular calcification, uh, the course of the uh, CX should be parallel to it. Both are in the AV roof. In REO cranial view, uh, only CX should be in this area parallel to the mitral annulus calcification. Absent uh, CX from the left system should be highly suspected if there is a hypoperfused area in the posterolateral wall free of blood supply in the REO caudal or cranial views. Since uh, the instance of absent left mean or short left mean are more common than anomalous CX, uh, they should be excluded in semi and non selective injections. A semi selective injection will exclude or confirm a short left mean. Absent left mean with separate origin of LED and CX will appear with a non selective injection. Typically, the CX origin is posterior and inferior to the LED origin. Several injections may be needed. To confirm the absence of CX from the left mean, we need a lateral and deep REO cranial view. In the lateral view, the CX should be posterior since it is in the posterior AV groove, at least the proximal segment in a non dominant CX. CX. So the lateral view is the most important view for diagnosis. No other artery is in this area. In the deep REO cranial, the catheter is between the CX and the LED. A very deep REO with more REO may be needed. In both views, at least look at the proximal segment of CX in cases of a small non-dominant CX. If the diagnosis is still uncertain, as in cases of small rudimentary CX, and after exclusion of absent or a short left mean, a semi or non-selective RC injections is done from the start especially if there is need for clinical interpretation or absent PDA in the left injections. To confirm anomalous CX origin from the RCA or right coronary sinus, we need a semi and non-selective RCA injections. RCA injection with normal aortic reflux of dye and normal pressure waves with delineation of the orifice is usually useful only if the origin of the CX is paraosteal from the RCA, not other types, a semi-selective injection is needed. The difference between both injections is just one millimeter catheter withdrawal with some reversal of rotation. Why a non-selective injection is uh, useful if the origin is common origin or a separate origin? Uh, several injections may be needed. How to describe anomalous CX from RCA or right coronary signs? Regarding the origin, uh, if there is no appearance of the RCA, it is considered type 1. 
uh, if there is spilling of spilling of dye in weekly in one of the arteries it is considered type 2 while in type 3 both arteries are well opacified uh, several views may be needed regarding the course uh, anomalous cx is a retro aortic course passing behind the right then the posterior uh, aortic cusp for confirmation a powerful semi-selective injection in lateral view is needed to see the course in contact with the posterior cusp also the RA coder view is useful typically speaking uh, the anomalous segment never gives origin to atrial or ventricular branches with this uh, retroaortic course green line uh, it will pass between the aortic annulus mainly the posterior sinus and the mitral and tricuspid annulus before reaching the posterior, the posterior AV goof regarding uh, osteal evaluation lesion spasm acute angulation is challenging if with common or separate origin the ostium first 3 to 5 mm is in close contact with the aortic wall. A deep PA or RA caudal makes a space from the RCA origin. LAU cranial may help. Uh, it delineates the CX origin from the aortic cusp and wall yellow arrow. LAU caudal view also delineates the ostium from the cusp with no overlap. Area of distribution. The LAO view needed for RCA injection may underestimate the CX length and branches. REO PA coded views for CX evaluation, OMs, and dominance. CX branches start after the retro, after the retro aortic course. They are not distal branches as first view may imply. The retro aortic course should be evaluated for any lesions. In this case, there is systolic compression in the retroaortic segment. IBIS may be needed to confirm the cause of obstruction in the retroaortic segment. Is it a lesion, compression, or spasm? And here are a few case presentations. A 73 years old male patient presented with acute coronary syndrome. And geography showed a small occluded common origin anomalous CX and PCI was done. Don't underestimate the size and area of perfusion supplied by a small caliper occluded anomalous CX. And in these uh, two cases, diagnosis of anomalous CX was done nine years, years or one and a half year after cabbage was done due to acute coronary syndrome presentation. Uh, an early diag was diagnosed as, an, as uh, CX. This is a case of inferior STEMI. Ramus artery was thought as left circumflex and RCA was normal with a selective injection. So the diagnosis was Minoka. Due to ongoing chest pain, CTA was done to exclude other causes. Uh, anomalous left circumflex artery was seen with a tight distal lesion. Yet the patient lost his chance of reperfusion. And uh, this is a case of inferior STEMI with previous left main LED PCI three years ago. Only with a non selective RCA injection, an anomalous occluded CX appeared and PCI was done. The previous PCI was an LED, not left main. While in this case of inferior STEMI, uh, anomalous CX, a selective injection was done and the CX was considered small and non-dominant with osteal spasm, with no evaluation of distal branches. Uh, chest pain was relieved with no Q-wave development. Mostly it was due to osteal CX spasm. In this case of total uh, LED occlusion, is this a long left main or CX occlusion after OM origin or remus? A semi-selective injection uh, showed normal RCA uh, with retrograde film to the LED. What is next? LED revascularization or search for CX. Several uh, left and right injections was done with no appearance of CX. What is next? LED revascularization 
or continuing search for CX. Eventually, uh, anomalous CX appeared with separate origin with a significant lesion in the retroaortic segment. PCI was done for both LED and CX. Anomalous CX should be differentiated from other anomalies. An occluded austere or very proximal CX should be differentiated from an absent CX from the left system uh, with an absent CX from the right. Uh, CT, IVUS, and clinical interpretation are important. It is highly suspected when there is an absent superdominant posterolateral artery. Uh, in this case, there is a long posterolateral artery yet not reaching near to the left mean. An absent or rudimentary CX is a very rare anomaly. In this case, is there CX artery in the posterior AV groove? In the majority of cases of absent CX, there is a super dominant posterolateral branch. In the lateral view, it is in the posterior groove. A super dominant posterolateral artery courses in the posterior AV groove instead of the CX with atrial and ventricular branches and reaching near to the left mean. Cases uh, with dual CX from both sides is a very rare anomaly. It should be suspected uh, if each artery has a posterior course in the lateral view or each artery supplies atrial or ventricular branches, not both. It is very important for clinical interpretation. A small atrial branch with retroaortic course may mimic an anomalous CX, yet it never reaches the groove, may branch early while the CX retroaortic segment doesn't. Technical points regarding engagement is very important. Any of these, any of these catheters uh, may be used in engagement. Notice the distance between the primary and the secondary curve and also the distance between the tip and the primary curve in Amplus left catheter if compared with other catheters. The origin of the anomalous CX with separate origin is always posterior to the RCA origin and at a lower level. Regarding Amplus left catheter, engagement is always challenging. It may be easily selectively engaged uh, deep in the CX due to long neck causing trauma to the ostium or non-selective injection with non-optimum RCA and CX opacification. With Amplus left catheter, the rotation is less eccentric. The tip reaches the wall of the aorta late. So with the rotation, it reaches the anomalous CX easily if, se if separate origin, with the possible mild traction to be coaxial with the inferior oriented CX. While with early branching CX, it reaches the RCA easily, yet due to the long tip, it may bypass the CX origin. With a possible mild traction to shorten the tip allowing CX engagement and to be coaxial with the inferior oriented CX. A short tip amplus left one catheter is an option. With the Jotkin right catheter, the rotation is more eccentric, so the tip reaches the wall of the aorta early, mostly before reaching the origin of the CX selectively, if with separate origin and with no coaxiality. While with early branching CX, it reaches the RCA easily. As said before in a previous video, the Jotkin right tip is usually horizontal, and with complete rotation, the tip will be directed inferiorly. Yet, with this rotation, it will be already deep in the RCA, missing the CX origin. So, in cases of early branch anomalous CX, Jotkin right is the preferred choice with no complete rotation. The other choice is Jotkin right with short tip. This anomalous CX is with separate origin. With more rotation of the Jotkin right catheter to engage it selectively, it became more eccentric across the wall. Most probably, this is the cause of osteal spiral dissection. Only with Amplus left catheter with wiring of both the RCA and CX, PCI was done. With 3DRC modified William catheter, as explained before, it is already posteriorly oriented. 
it navigates this area with minimal rotation needed with selective injection, injection of separate origin CX. Yet, as said before, the tip is directed anterior to the RCA, not posteriorly to the CX. Uh, it also, uh, due to its short neck, it semi-selectively injects the CX uh, if early origin from RCA. Ambulance right catheter is less eccentric with rotation. This allows navigation of all the area, including both types of anomalous CX. With a shorter neck than amplus left catheter, it engages early branch CX, not deep in the RCA. If the CX origin is late from the RCA ostium, it is managed as any branch from the RCA with the usual Jutkin right catheter. With multipurpose catheter, it is difficult to maintain posterior orientation of the catheter near to the separate origin CX after rotation. It has a long neck between the yellow arrows, allowing a deep engagement of, with poor control, with high possibility of CX trauma, which is always with posterior and inferior deflection or tendency. Dual injections is useful. Uh, anomalous CX with separate origin is confirmed by dual injection and PCI was done, but only after six years of instability due to misinterpretation. The CX was considered small and rudimentary. And this is the end of the video. Uh, thank you for your attention and waiting for your uh, feedback.